Well, for the past several months, uh, Achieving the Dream teams have been very busy collecting um, data and uncovering best practices for supporting students who are in most need of our support. Uh, several team members were involved in qualitative data collection and analysis. And this was in the form of faculty and staff fishbone sessions, as well as um, student focus groups. In addition, uh, the teams were very involved in um, collecting uh, current literature and reviewing what the other Achieving the Dream schools were doing. A cross-campus representation of the teams had attended Achieving the Dream Institute where they were able to hear best practices from the leader schools who've had sustained and um, significant success in their colleges. It was an eye-opening experience for me. It's just, you know, students are talking and we are listening and we learned from our students things that we haven't learned before uh, about how we are functioning, what can we offer, what can we do, uh, things that we need to correct and so forth. But what really, I think, struck me was a conversation we had with one young man who was talking about all his pressures outside the school. And he said that he, he's definitely committed to doing his best here, but he feels like every day, if there's one more obstacle that he has to encounter, that he might not make it. And so that just really spoke to the breaking point that many of our students are at, and that oftentimes we don't know the conversations, how important they are, and how, how that personal touch really can make a difference because they're really at their last string so many so often. Definitely the motivation because a lot, of, a lot of my friends actually dropped out their first semester, fall semester. It's because like all of us around my age group, we kind of want it now. It just seems like all of the data is uh, supporting each other almost. Um, so the things that the students are telling us are, are very similar to what we're hearing from faculty and staff and administration in terms of what the barriers appear to be. I know we require extra amount of hours to study out of school, and that was my problem. Um, cause I had a lot of things going on in the community and at home, so I had to basically set time aside to do extra studying in the courses that I was struggling in. One of the strategies of the uh, Achieving the Dream is uh, to help students build momentum in their early years, their early semesters here, and then hopefully that will carry through to completion of getting a degree or a certificate. And something that was said at uh, one of the meetings that I was at that was really that really resonated with me is maybe as a mathematician I guess but it's a paraphrase of Newton's first law of motion uh, and it, uh, the way it's applied to achieving the dream principles is that a student at rest tends to stay at rest and a student in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an external force and I think as faculty and as academic support staff we often need to be that force to kind of get a student that's at rest into motion and get them moving through to their completion of their goals. The major takeaway point from the developmental ed focus groups was that our students, um, some of the issues that came up over and over were that they struggle with technology, uh, they struggle with time management, and they also have a difficult time attending very regularly. And so those were some of the repetitive issues that came up uh, across the, the focus groups that I was a part of. Uh, it's not something that we can take lightly and think it's going to be a short-term project and, over, and after three years we'll be done, but it's really going to reshape how we interact with our students and, and ask us to put on a lens to say, if what we're doing is good currently, how do we want to really improve that and make it better in the future? You know, if we're talking about student success and improving it, does that mean that we're going to diminish academic rigor? And I think that certainly has never been part of the conversation. You know, the key thing that we're looking at is are there ways that students can learn um, and can we deliver content in unique ways that will meet those learning needs? You know, for me, it was good to get outside of my, you know, particular program and talk to students from, you know, sort of different perspectives at the college and see that um, while all of our students have unique situations and unique challenges, there definitely are some common themes. Helping students with their personal life, life so to speak, it's uh, how do they manage their time, how do they face the problems that, you know, family problems and life happens, how can we uh, create a barrier between what is happening in their personal lives and you know the studying they are doing here and the learning they are doing here and how to facilitate that so to speak. Some of the challenges were understanding you know concepts whether it be in math or uh, biology I don't think I was comprehending it 
quick enough. Supplemental instruction came in uh, in a biology class, in a biology 111 class, which um, a lot of non-traditional students were struggling. It, really, it was really helpful. I got an A in the class. <laughs> but I think if it wasn't for that supplemental instruction, I, I probably wouldn't have got an A. In. The next phase of the Achieving the Dream work is the creation of an implementation plan. This plan will be based on the priorities that were set at the Achieving the Dream retreat, which involved nearly 60 members of the Columbus State faculty and staff. For each priority, we are going to define a number of strategies or interventions to help try to close the gaps that we discovered through our quantitative data analysis. Each one of those implementation, each one of those strategies will have a plan for measuring its success attached to it. It has already been a great experience to work with the literally hundreds of different people that I've had the chance to work with on Achieving the Dream, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you and hearing your feedback about this process and, and again, ultimately working together as an entire campus community to work toward our goal of helping our students succeed both here at Columbus State and in life.